Namaste, hello and welcome back to another video on eco-consciousness. My name is Ohuna and today's video is going to be about um, my thoughts on the book which I recently completed which is The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores and I had been reading this book for one of my reading projects which is Deep Forest Drums along with an ongoing readathon which is called Hikathod Reads which has been created and hosted by Macy from The Bright Side Girl. I'll leave a link to her announcement videos and all other relevant videos in the description box below as well as in the overhead cards above so please do join me further in this video So now let's come around to this book. Now, The Witch and the Vampire by Francesca Flores uh, is a forest fantasy and it is a queer retelling of Rapunzel. So we have this uh, empire called the Erlanis Empire and east of the Erlanis Empire lies a very small town called Arborin, which is where our story takes place. Now, Arborin though is a very small town, but it is very significant. And um, there is this um, local body of government called uh, the Clarence whose officials directly report to the emperor. The reason being, Arboron lies at the periphery of a very dangerous forest which harbors w uh, vampires in them and the queen of the vampire lives at the heart of the forest. So in order to ensure that uh, the vampires of the forest don't come into Arboron and escape into the city and cause a massacre and harm humans and witches alike, uh, the uh, emperor has created a local government body composing of uh, or comprising of um, humans as well as uh, witches who are um, taking care of the fact that the vampires are kept at bay. So almost everybody at Arborin has only one um, main goal to keep the vampires away from uh, the human population or the witch population. Now, the witches are actually descendants of very ancient gods called the Arcana. And um, when the uh, Arcana had descended on Earth and they had taught the mortals magic, they had also mingled with the mortals and they had created descendants. And these descendants were witches who knew the true powers of the various forms of magic. So we have storm witches, we have flame witches, we have root witches who work with elemental earth magic, etc. Now, um, in Arborin, the concentration of flame witches is very high because uh, of the fact that vampires can only be killed either by decapitation or by fire. So flame witches try to kill vampires by fire, whereas the humans who are hunters and who also um, kill vampires uh, use silver, which actually uh, leeches all the power away from the vampires and injures them and paralyzes them. So they use silver to decapitate vampires. So we have this small little um, army, which has um, humans as well as witches or flame witches who try to keep the vampires at bay. Now, our story starts with three childhood friends who are Ava, Kay and Tristan and all their parents were uh, serving as um, uh, authorities in the Clarity government. So we have Ava whose father was uh, a storm witch and her mother was Eugenia, was a root witch and um, unfortunately um, Ava's father passes away because he gets trapped in one of the um, uh, traps inside the uh, forest which was uh, laid down by the human hunters and left for about, around five days and um, Ava's father gets trapped in one of these uh, traps and he passes away so by the time um, the hunters find him he's already uh, passed on into the spirit world and he's dead so um, Eugenia has um, uh, unfortunately at that same time gets bitten by a vampire and she becomes a vampire herself and um, an adult witch bitten by a vampire and getting converted into vampire would mean that she would lose all her powers as a witch but this is not the case in case if the witch is or if the um, uh, person who's bitten is coming of age and she is um, uh, coming of age and stepping into her powers and if at that point of time if uh, uh, this witch is uh, killed and converted into a vampire she or he will regain or retain not only her witch powers but also the powers of a vampire which is exactly what Eugenia's mother does so she gets married to um, the um, 
nephew of the emperor who is very much interested in uh, conducting experiments on newly converted witches so um eugenia's mother converts ava into who's coming into her witch powers now as a root witch she converts her into a vampire and uh, keeps her as a lab rat trapped inside a very big tower like house um and uh, because she's coming into her power, so Ava has to keep very long hair, which reaches almost the floor. She's trapped inside this castle, and um, that makes her like a Rapunzel. And she's not allowed to go out. She does not come into full fruition of a vampire because she's given very small amounts of blood. She's also surrounded by silver because, as I mentioned before, silver harms the vampires and paralyzes them as well. And also, um, as a root witch, her mother extracts all because her mother has uh, lost all her powers so um in order to ensure that uh, she uh the, this secret of hers is not revealed amongst the clarity members she leeches off all the powers or she takes uh, away all the powers of her daughter ava and uses them to um create an illusion that she's still a root witch and she's just normal and she goes around her day but she has some sinister plants which is building around um the bone wall which separates the forest from arborean and um her mother or ava's mother plans to destroy the bone wall and get the vampires from the forest into Arborin. And therefore, Ava, who wants to protect not only her um, uh, human friends and um, the humans who are living in Arborin, but she also wants to prove her loyalty to the vampires. So she wants to go and meet the queen of the vampires, Cassopia, in the heart of the forest and inform the sinister plan of her mother so that this does not happen. Uh, and um, Cassopia can actually protect her vampires and protect um, the bone wall so that the vampires cannot go uh, into the um, realm of the humans. Our second protagonist, Kay, who is um, a who has a single mother. Um, and uh, when she comes of age, uh, or when she's coming of age, unfortunately, she loses her mother because um, apparently uh, her mother is uh, murdered by a vampire and uh, she loses all her blood and therefore she immediately passes away. And um, Kay, who um, is left orphaned and she is left friendless because Ava was supposed to be her closest friend and she looks up at Tristan who is her next best friend and Tristan is also coming of age he's also uh, coming to his, into his powers and Tristan's father Leander is supposed to be uh, the head of all the flame witches and therefore um, Tristan has a lot of pressure to rise up to his father's expectations so he only focuses on his own training and uh, to ensure that he can uh, grab the top notch position within the flame witches community so that he can uh, rise up to the expectations of his father and therefore he ignores his other good friend Kay and Kay is actually um, left all alone in this world although she is taken under the wake of um, Leander who is Tristan's father and she's trained thoroughly to become a flame witch and uh, Kay starts um, understanding the fact that or she starts um, realizing the fact that maybe uh, Ava has not actually um, as her mother has uh, confirmed with the entire community maybe Ava has not left um, her house and maybe she's trapped inside the house and maybe she has been converted into something more sinister like a vampire and um, Tristan is actually avoiding her and she has to make um, her path in this world so she's going she decides to become one of the best fighter flame witches uh, who can kill vampires as well because she aims to catch the um, vampire who actually murdered her mother and therefore these three friends have their own separate paths and uh, they have to follow their own separate uh, destinies but unfortunately uh, there is a tear in the bone wall which separates the forest from the um, town and uh, this tear allows the vampires from the forest to come into the town and uh, create and they start there are some killings which happen and therefore to investigate into it and to ensure that uh, they can capture and stop maximum vampires from entering from the forest into uh, the town um, Leander gives um, Kay as well as Tristan permission to enter into the forest and reach the town called Chrysalis, which lies at the heart of the um, 
forest. Uh, it's a human um, village, but then um, they are there are regular flame witches who go and keep guard, and um, they try and destroy any vampires who are nearby. Now, the significance of the forest to the emperor is that uh, there are silver mines which are present um, beneath this forest. And silver is a very essential metal because uh, obviously it is uh, essential to for fighting against vampires. So uh, the humans who stay in the small forest village of Christianus are actually miners and they take a risk and they go down into the mines to, um, to mine out most of the silver so that it can be uh, uh, transported back to the empire so that it can be converted into different sort of uh, metals as well as instruments which can stop um, any vampires who are, are running loose. So Ava has her mission to reach Cassopia and she finds a tear in the bone wall. She somehow manages to escape from her Rapunzel-like tower and um, escapes into the forest and the destinies of these three friends change when they meet in the forest unknowingly they stumble into each other there are clashes they are almost um, uh, against each other and they are almost going to take each other's life because uh, Ava is a vampire K is a flame witch who is um, uh, trained to uh, kill vampires and Tristan is bound to obey his father and capture any loose vampires who are running and uh, report them or directly bring them to um, the forest village of Chrysalis and in between and amidst all this there is the forest which is actually dying and which is actually become a carnivorous animal and the vampires from the forest are leaving the forest because the forest seems to be consuming everything and anything which is there within it so it's almost an a, a dystopian um, like fantasy uh, setting which is present within the forest the trees are rotting the roots are rotting the instead of the bark of the root of the wood of the uh, tree trunks being brown they are actually leached white and there is uh, a, the forest is almost dying and it's trying to engulf everything and anything which is there within it and um, these three friends have to face each other and it is Ava who is the elemental root witch who has to save this forest. And uh, how they do this is what the story is all about. Now, um, as I was reading the story, till the um, mid-section of the story, the story was almost around a 3 to 3.5 stars for me. But as I progressed, it's, it started becoming a little more than 3.5. And finally, because uh, this uh, story treats the forest as an ecological unit uh, which has dystopian like um, uh, conditions but then um, whether it is restored or not that is what this story is all about and I ended up giving it a four star so this was a four star read for me and I have left my Goodreads review link in the description box below so should you be interested in knowing more about my opinion on this you definitely can cross check with it so those were my thoughts on this book. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you will uh, pick up this book if you have not picked up this book and enjoy it as well. And um, with that, I'll be wrapping up this video. I'll be back with a few more books which I'm currently reading uh, in my next video. So stay tuned uh, for that. So till then, take care. Have a good reading week ahead and namaste.